Garrett Blevins here with an overview of the last two uh, real workouts of the peaking program. There is going to be a third week, but pretty much that's just uh, some real light work with about 70% uh, to keep the movement pattern in practice. So on the uh, second day of the week, there was some form practice on squats followed by some uh, deadlift. Uh, this pretty much is just to work on singles, setting up under the bar, and uh, lifting the weight. The uh, earlier reps are a little bit off, I would say, uh, a little high, um, just kind of beat up, but as I moved through these sets, I started to get more and more comfortable. Uh, some of these felt really good, uh, really strong, and uh, speed was moving really well on this day. Uh, even with 575, that's still about, I think, 85% or something like that. And so it's a, it's a decent weight to use. It would be a good weight to uh, rep out on uh, for working sets. But for singles, that really qualifies. It's not so much speed work as form work. Um, but they still are supposed to move pretty fast. And I was really happy with that last rep there. I think that moved the fastest of them all. Uh, then moved into uh, deadlift. On this day, I was supposed to go to about 685 uh, or 690. And then I had a little bit of wiggle room if I wanted to go above that. I tried to attack the bar as aggressively as possible today. I am uh, using a stiffer bar than I've ever used before. Uh, this bar here is the Rogue Ohio Power Bar, which I believe is rated at 205,000 PSI, as opposed to the uh, Texas Power Bar, which is rated about 185,000 PSI. Uh, the difference between those two, uh, I would say the bend uh, is pretty substantial um, difference between the two bars at least in half an inch on the deadlifts, maybe even a little more than that. And also the uh, Ohio Power Bar will uh, bounce up and down a lot less. It goes back to being stiff uh, a lot faster than the, uh, the Texas Bar. The Texas Bar, especially in squats, I would notice when I locked them out, would go up and down and really jiggle around on my back, uh, which messes with my vertebrae. They're pretty much acting as shock absorbers in that scenario which I do not like. And uh, this bar, although it will bounce up and down a little bit, it stops that bouncing uh, faster than the Texas bar. Um, again, you'll notice though that this means, since it's so stiff, the bar is going to move slow off the floor. And this is something I'm not really good at yet. Uh, I have to be patient in my sumos when I'm breaking the floor. But at the same time, uh, sometimes I just feel like I'm running out of strength and I'm not going to break it. Once I get it off the floor, the weight usually accelerates to the top and moves very well. Um, I don't have any lockout issues or anything like that. And I think that's due to not breaking form at the bottom, uh, cheating in any way to get the bar to break the floor. Because usually if you break the floor with compromised form, you're going to have a tough time with the lockout. Uh, this was as heavy as I went, moved up to 705, and you'll see there, very consistent bar speed once it breaks the floor. Um, so I'm really interested to see what's going to happen at the meet. Uh, this is pretty similar to meet conditions as far as bar stiffness. Uh, though the bumper plates do make it a little bit easier. Um, and finished out the day with a 655. Uh, 705 exceeded my RP probably a little bit, closer to an RP 10 instead of 9.5. But overall happy with that day, feeling good going into the meet. Uh, finished up with the last day here with some bench press. Um, again, some singles, much like the squats from the previous day. And again, just working on form, making sure everything's dialed in. Weight is not too heavy, but it's also not too light. It's not speed work, um, still about 80-85% somewhere in there. Um, and the weights moved pretty well today. In fact, 405 moved so well I decided to bump up to 425 for my last two singles uh, to finish out the, uh, the training cycle. Um, I will have a review of this training cycle coming up uh, where I'll go into detail a little bit more about what I did. If you look back over the videos, you'll be able to figure out that it really was not changing a whole lot week to week. Uh, follows really three basic uh, protocols uh, throughout the program. And as I've said before, training programs don't have to be really complicated to work. One thing I'll note here is I noticed a little bit of hip drive, uh, maybe even lifting my butt up off the bench a little bit. And so I tucked my feet back as far as I could so that I physically couldn't raise my butt up off the bench. That's one of those things to look out for uh, when competition comes, that you don't want to have uh, form breakdown with heavier weights as you strain. That said, um, I'm looking forward to the meet. I'm feeling very good. A uh, little, little bit of fatigue left, but really I'm starting to get rid and pay off that fatigue debt as the volume has been lower. And hopefully I'm going to have a pretty good super compensation out of this. Um, people have asked me uh, what numbers I want to hit at the meet. Honestly, I just want to hit what I can hit. Uh, I just want to go in and have a good day, um, at least 7 for 9. 
Um, really would like to go nine for nine, but I do want to push it as well. Um, especially on, uh, really, I want to push it on all three lifts, squat, bench, and deadlift on my thirds, but still within reason, uh, not shoot for a number that's impossible, but something doable. And I think I can have uh, definitely a PR total and hopefully get over the, uh, the 1912 mark, which is the uh, current world record for the 242 drug-tested uh, weight class. Uh, it would be an unofficial uh, record, but it's still something that could happen. So we'll see. Uh, hope wherever you're at, you're doing well. Blessings.